Hey everyone, Mitch coming in from the Commander's Corps studio. Welcome to the show. So on this episode, we're going to be talking about Isildur's Fateful Strike. Now, we have seen some crazy things in the past, and a legendary instant is a brand new thing that we have never seen before, and actually outside of a couple of cards, and I'll kind of mention one of them here in a bit, we really never see legendary uh, non-permanent cards, essentially. So yeah, legendary instants, legendary sorceries now, of course, are a thing. Which is kind of crazy, and actually Mark Rosewater kind of alluded to this earlier in the teasers that, hey, there'd be five different kinds of legendary cards, and yeah, apparently Instant is one of them, so let's check that box. Yeah, regardless, let's talk about this card and what kind of an impact it can have and what kind of decks might want to utilize it. It's a very interesting one. So Isildur's Fateful, Isildur's, if I could say it right, Fateful Strike is a legendary Instant for two black black, and again, as a reminder for legendary instants and sorceries, it follows the exact same protocol, essentially. You may cast a legendary instant only if you control a legendary creature or planeswalker. Again, you are in commander. Uh, typically, uh, you might have your commander in play or another legendary creature in play, so you can pretty easily meet that requirement. It says, destroy target creature. If its controller has more than four cards in hand, guess what? They exile cards from their hand equal to the difference. So, a seal door is literally... Chopping off a hand, or parts of a hand, you know, fingers, essentially. And now you are also chopping down on an opponent's hand. That can be a massive play. Again, this is instant speed, basically creature removal, which it is over-costed for that, right? Murder is a three-mana card. This is four. That being said, this now also says, you know what? You've got a lot of card advantage over there, blue player or green player, whatever it is, you know, over there who's drawing a ton of cards. You've got a massive hand. Let's chop that down. You get to keep four cards in hand. That is it. Which again, if they're at a full grip, cool. That takes them down from seven down to three. Di you know, not I was gonna say card advantage. It's card disadvantage for that player, essentially. You know, you're helping everyone else at the table, essentially, except for that player. So you can make some friends with this. You can say, hey, you know what? I'm gonna help everyone else out, all right? Give me a turn off other two players, okay? Give me a turn off. I'm gonna take out this player's best creature. They're ahead of us, right? I'm also gonna take their hand down to just four cards. And of course, I mean, if they've got no maximum hand size, or again, this is on that player's turn when you can do this, because this is instant speed, they might have 12 cards in their hand, and you say, let's take that down to a more reasonable amount again, just two, four. Of course, this also, keep in mind, does not, you know, just get exiled away when it's cast, so there are ways to get it back, there are ways to recast it, there are ways to copy it. You can do this a lot throughout the game, and it's a pretty brutal effect, so you can really kind of hammer in and, and kind of keep players down, essentially, to where you want them to be. You are the one who gets to have the full grip, right? No one else does, or at least that other player that no one else wants to win does, so there you go. Again, there's a good amount of decks out there, I think, that can actually utilize a card like this in a fantastic fashion in a specific kind of deck that over the past couple of years has gotten very, very, very popular. I'm talking about one of the most popular commanders currently definitely wants to consider this card. So, well, um, yeah, and this uh, is a different kind of a quick take. You know, it's not a commander, so I'm not going to be going through budget buys or, you know, price your picks. I'm just going to talk about what kinds of cards this is kind of similar to and then also what kinds of cards or what kind of commanders i should say might want to consider this card so let's jump into it we're to start things off with again a comparable ish card to this one primeval's glorious rebirth this is one of i believe six and check me in the comments below if i'm wrong on that six legendary sorceries we've got this one then we've got one of each color regardless i'm bringing up this one for a very specific reason See legendary sorcery for seven mana. You may cast it again. It will control a legendary creature planeswalker. Exact same text essentially again as our brand new legendary instant, except for obviously instant is replaced with sorcery. Return all legendary permanent cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. So this one is a massive reanimation effect just for you. And if you are playing legendary tribal, ding ding ding, yeah, that that is uh, the new spot for this brand new card potentially. <laughs> then this can have a massive impact. So yes. If you are playing Legendary Tribal, this brand new Legendary Instant can be huge in that. So, I mean, I'm not going to go through every single Legendary Sorcerer. Yes, there are five other ones. So they're, each they're really cool, but here we go. Let's now talk about the commanders that might want to consider this card. And of course, there's going to be more than I just bring up on this episode. It's a decent removal spell. I mean, it's overcosted for that, but again, it's a really cool effect where, hey, take out someone's hand, essentially. Joda, the Unifier, is the first one that came to my mind. Five color, legendary tribal. This card is absurd. 
and uh, very popular and very uh, yeah potent. A five five human wizard again for Wooburg. Legendary creatures you control get plus X plus X for X the number of legendary creatures you control. On top of that, whenever you cast a legendary spell from your hand, exile cards they top your library to exile legendary non land card lesser mana value. You may cast a card without paying its mana cost for the rest of the bottom of your library in a random order. So this legendary instant can be a massive card for you. Essentially, hey, you can use it to basically legendary cascade by casting it. You know, going into something, you know, cascading basically until it costs three or less. Or, obviously, you can cascade into this. Again, the more legendary things you have in this deck, the more value, you know, you might be able to hit off of this commander. So, definitely keep that in mind. The more legendary things you can cast, now you get access to, you know, not just legendary sorceries, but a legendary instant. And I highly doubt this is going to be the only one in Magic's history. So, we should be seeing some, maybe even more in this set. But if not, more in sets to come as well. So, yeah, Jota Unifier can definitely utilize a card like this. In a somewhat similar way, we've got kept this the Hidden Hand. Another legendary tribal commander. This might have been actually the first one. Comment below and let me know if that's correct. Or, I mean, I guess the first official one. The first one that is like, hey, uh, legendary spell specifically. I guess technically there's that one green commander that draws based off legendary. So I'm probably wrong with this. Anyways, a 3 4 health advisor for white, black, and a green. Legendary spells you cast, cost one to cast. So now our brand new legendary instant is basically just a cost of a murder, which is just great, okay? It's at least now just three mana. You still get that destroyed creature. But you also get, again, that massive impact of saying, hey, you're way ahead of everyone. Let's take your hand down. Or you made me mad. Let's take your hand down and your creature too. On top of that, exile two legendary cards from your graveyard. Until end of turn, each legendary card in your graveyard gains. You may play this card from your graveyard. So, first up, this can be extra great fodder for you. Again, this can fill a need. It can fill a hole of, you know, a basically a removal spell for you in, in multiple ways, essentially. And now this can just be great fodder for you to exile it out of your graveyard to allow you to play other legendary things. Or, or if you really, really need to cast it again, awesome. Exile other legendary things. Now you've got access to that card as well out of your graveyard. Recast it, take something out, take someone's hand out. And uh, yeah, when it comes to that as well, um, a gross commander can absolutely utilize this card in an even, even more disgusting way mana-wise. Crick, Yaw, Son of Yawgmoth. It's Carrick or Crick? I can never remember what it is. Let me know in the comments below. 2-2. Two, two. That has the lifelink, and for each black and a mana cost, you may pay two rather than pay that mana. Basically, every single one of your black mana symbols are going to be Phyrexian mana. On top of that, whenever you cast a black spell, you get a counter on it. So yeah, you can gain some of that life back with that lifelink. Regardless, this card now is just two mana instead of four. So there you go. A massive cost reduction. Again, you're going to have a lot of ways to generate a lot of value with this commander on your end. So a way to impede someone else, a way to take out one of their creatures and just demolish their hand can be brutal, can be incredible. So yeah, this kind of commander definitely might want to consider this. Moving on, Braids Arisen Nightmare. 3-3, three, three, Legendary Creature Nightmare. At the beginning of your end step, you may sacrifice an artifact creature enchantment land or planeswalker. If you do, your opponent may sacrifice a permanent that shows a card type with it. If your opponent doesn't, the player loses life, you draw a card. A very punishing commander, again, allowing you to gain a lot of advantage off your opponents, or at least a lot of disadvantage for them. And again, you can disadvantage them further. You can destroy their creature. You can absolutely wreck their hand. This can be a nightmare of a commander against them, and pun intended. Next up, Gix, Yawgmoth, Praetor. Now, this one works in an interesting way. Whenever a creature goes common damage to one of your opponents, it's enjoyment may pay one life. If they do, they draw a card. This applies to everyone's creatures, not just your own. You are incentivizing everyone to attack your opponents. When they do, they can draw cards. Great, good for them. Except uh, when things get a little out of hand, you can rein them back in by saying, you know what, thanks for hitting uh, Billy Bob over there. But now I'm going to say, you know what, you just drew like nine cards. I don't really want you to utilize them, or at least all of them essentially. So let's just take you down just a notch, okay? I'm going to take out one of your creatures at instant speed and take out a lot of your hand, again, at instant speed. On top of that, the, you know, basically ultimate of this card is pay four, black, 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 discard X cards, exit the top of X cards to target player's library, target opponent's library, and play lands and cast spells from them up, paying the mana cost. So cool. Villainous Wealth as well. An amazing, amazing effect. Absolutely love that. But yeah, commanders that actually can generate card advantage for your opponents definitely want to consider something like this to kind of mitigate that in a way so i mean i guess i'm not saying group hug commanders because those that's not really a group huggy type effect but maybe some politics commanders ones like this that incentivize opponents to draw off of the pain of others now you can kind of rein things back in next up mogus god of slaughter a group slug type commander that again just likes to punish players for doing what they want to do too bad you cannot do that it's a motion to black and res less than seven. It's not a creature. It's indestructible. Seven, five. Beginning of each opponent's upkeep. Mogus can deal two damage without playing unless you sacrifice a creature. So again, 
disadvantage for opponents, taking them down, taking their creatures down. And of course, you can just take that even further by taking another one of their creatures out with this brand new spell. And on top of that, take their hand out while you're at it. So yeah, group slug, punishing type commanders can definitely utilize this really quick. Another one, your lock of Scorch Thrust, a really fun one for four Vigilance. A player losing unspent mana causes that player to lose that much life. And pay one tab each player adds Jund colors, essentially. This is incredible. This is funny. This is basically like, hey, uh, mana burn is back. Yeah. And on top of that, hey, again, that's punishing enough. Now let's punish you further. Take out a creature. Take out your hand. We can also do things where we share the love just a little bit, right? In a little the painter. A great commander. A really crazy good commander. One that can be very broken in certain ways. And uh, I guess if you're not going extra turns tribal, uh, here you go. You can utilize this new card with this commander. 1-3 Vampire Sash with that touch. The first instant source spell you cast each turn has casualty too. Again, it's the first one every single turn. So that includes your opponent's turns as well. Having an instant that can have this kind of an impact be doubled up on your opponent's turn by sacrificing creatures that you might want to sacrifice already. You've got plenty of creature fodder, I'm sure. Just basically cast this on opponent's turn, double it up, destroy two creatures. You're probably going to want to spread that out between two opponents because, hey, both of your opponents, let's say, have a full grip. Now you just knocked out, you know, for the cost of basically four mana and doubling it up by sacrificing a creature, two creatures, and uh, let's again say full grips, six cards in total. You took out a lot of cards in your opponent's hands. So make sure you're considering copy commanders like this. And finally, also make sure you're considering commanders that can utilize cards out of the graveyard as well. Cast Dissident Mage, a 3-4 Flying Human Wizard. During each of your turns, you may cast in Sorcerer Spell from your graveyard. If a spell casts away, put in a graveyard, exile instead. Basically give you a second shot at that card. So again, take a player down by taking out a creature. Maybe wait a little bit if you really need to. If you're saying like, you know what? This player has a ton of draw effects. They're going to be getting back up to an absurd amount of cards. I will just lie in waiting again. I will lie in waiting to utilize that card again. So yeah, Cass can definitely consider a card like this. But yeah, overall, very exciting to see a legendary instant again. It was definitely hypothesized that we would see one because Morrow did give some hints earlier and was like, hey, five different legendary kinds. And some players out there were like, hey, probably legendary instants. We've been waiting for those since we saw legendary sorceries a while back. I think Dominaria is when we saw those first. Let me know in the comments if I'm wrong on that. But yeah, it's been a while since we've really gotten some legendary outside of, uh, you know, permanence. We've gotten plenty of those lately. But yeah, now we have legendary instants. Finally check that box. Now I guess we just have legendary battles to get. Is, is that basically what's next, essentially? I don't think we've got any legendary battles yet, but yeah, let me know in the comments below if I'm wrong on that as well. Really exciting. I like the design of this. Again, punishing to take out a creature, punishing to take out a hand. Again, instant speed. So someone draws a ton of cards in their turn. You're like, let's take you back down. Slow things down there, buddy. And yeah, this can be an absolutely massive play. Again, can work in a lot of different kinds of decks out there. Punishing decks, legendary tribal especially, and a lot of really cool things. And we'll have to see will we actually see kind of like this cycle combine or cycle combine cycle finish right I, i'm i'm not i guess i'm assuming there's a cycle if we see a secondary color in a legendary instant in this set i bet we're gonna see all five essentially so we shall see again i think in dominaria we got the five different ones i could be wrong on that let me know in the comments below though really excited about this one and yeah let me know your thoughts on this card a really exciting one for sure and with that, this episode is coming to a close, so let me know what your thoughts are on it in the comments below. And of course, as always, thanks again and have a good one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support.